Ride Learners! Okay, today let's do chapters 23 through 27. We're getting closer to the end. I can feel it. You ready? <laughs> we do! <sighs> Chapter 23. It won't work. Look, said Joe, even if he remembers the worm while we're at Shea, he can't get one. What's anybody going to find a worm at Shea Stadium? Don't worry. We'll say you've won. We'll find a worm after we get home, and we'll keep right on stuffing him. Peanuts, hot dogs, hamburgers, Cracker Jacks, ice cream, orange soda, gum, Mars bars. You know how he loves to eat. You ever seen him refuse anything to eat? By the time we'll start home, he'll be so bloated, drowsy, belching. Remember the last time when his father took us? He was asleep at the time we hit Peekskill. Your father will carry him for in from the car. His father, mother and father, will put him to bed. Next morning he'll wake up. Too late. You've won. <laughs> fifteen worms in fifteen days. He missed a day. Alan nodded his thumb now. What about Tom? We'll ask him along on this and just not pick him up. We can tell your father and Billy that Tom's mother called. He was sick. His grandmother died. Anything. Just so we don't have to bring him with us. Alan sighed. <sighs> Jeez, it'll probably cost me eight dollars just to buy all that food. Cracker Jacks and hamburgers. Yeah, but it'll cost you fifty if he wins. Oh, well. Oh, geez. How do I ever get into this if my father finds out? Alan slumped on the porch stair steps, gazing down at his sneakers, gnawing his thumbnail. Come on, said Joe, slapping him on the shoulder. Cheer up. You haven't lost yet. Go ask your father. Next chapter, the twelfth worm. You think Alan really meant it when he said he'd given up? Asked Billy, turning down the flame under the frying pan. He was cooking a toasted cheese and worm sandwich. I don't know, said Tom, looking in the refrigerator. I suppose so. He asked us to the Mets game. Say, is that chocolate pudding? Yeah, but don't take any. It's for supper. I could just scrape some off the top, and then you could tell your mother it fell out upside down on the floor by mistake while you were getting the cheese out, so you scraped the dirty part into the garbage. Well, said Billy doubtfully. Thomas Grout, said Billy's mother, coming in from the hall. I'm surprised at you. Aw, oh, Mrs. Forrester, I wouldn't really have done it. I was just, you know, talking. Everybody talks. My father, Billy's father, Billy, my sisters, Annie, Charlotte, Polly. He was backing towards the door. Betty, Agnes, Columbus. I didn't know you had a sister named Columbus, Tom, said Billy's mother. Would she like some chocolate ice cream instead? <laughs> oh, sure, Mrs. Forrester, said Tom, relieved. He sat down at the table. It's my cousin who's named Columbus, he grinned. Columbus, Ohio. He's a capital fellow. And then he had to grab the edge of the table to keep from rolling off of his chair, laughing at his own joke. Billy looked disgusted. His mother opened the refrigerator, shaking her head. Chapter 25 The car slid quietly to a stop under the street light outside Billy's house. Shh, whispered Alan to his father. Billy's asleep. His father glanced back at Billy, snoring peacefully in the back seat. His plump cheeks sticky with orange soda. Alan, run up to the house and tell them I'm bringing Billy in. Billy's father met them at the front door, and taking Billy, whispered his thanks. Thanks. Alan and his father went down the walk. Behind them, the porch light clicked off. In the back seat of the car, Alan and Joe wrestled gleefully. We did it! We won! He'll never wake up now. Alan struggled out of Joe's grip and asked his father what time it was. Late. Almost midnight, I think. Joe pulled Alan's head down and tried to sit on it. He couldn't do it now, even if he did wake up. He couldn't find and cook and eat a worm in the dark. <laughs> we've won, we've won. Chapter 26, Guadalcanal. But, slumped on the bathroom stool, his mother holding up his chin while she washed his face. Billy was waking. Hold still, dear. Did you have a good time? You're certainly home late. Is this part of winning the bet? Billy's eyes blinked sleepily. He had a gnawing feeling he had forgotten something. He hiccuped, gazing dopily down at the fuzzy blue bath mat. 
yawned. Oh, he remembered in the morning. It couldn't be that important. Bet? Bet? He hadn't won yet. There were still three days to go. Fifteen. Fifteen worms in fifteen days. Today was... He jumped up. Mom, I haven't eaten my worm today. And suddenly... It all came to him. The whole trip. All the candy bars and the hot dogs and the hamburgers and the popcorn. What time is it, Mom? Quick. About a quarter till twelve. It was a trick! He snatched his pants off the floor. They were trying to make me forget. He tumbled and slid downstairs through the dining room, his shirt tail flying, yanking open the drawer in the kitchen table, snatched out the flashlight, the drawer spilling out with a clatter and crash onto the floor, and slammed out the back door. The Finks! He scuttled across the back field towards Tom's house, searching the ground with the flashlight as he went. There, darn a stick. Gee, suppose I can't find one. He stopped. There won't be time to cook it. He ran on. And no catch-up. He stopped. I'll bet Tom wasn't sick at all. He ran on. The night was moonless and close. He paused to heave over a rotten log in the high, dewy grass. Mealybugs and scooters clambered over the stone wall of into Tom's backyard and was all of a sudden wrestling with a pup tent. Stop while we draw a pup tent. When I was little, we had a red pup tent, so that's what I'm going to draw. Don't laugh at my pup tent drawing. I didn't claim to be a great artiste. It looks like a barn. Shh, I know it looks like a barn. <laughs> oh, well, it's not exactly very good, but that's okay. There it is. There's the, it's the center. Muffled grunts and thrashing from inside. Tom, he yelled, Tom, it's me. Billy, they're trying to trick us. Tom and his younger brother Pete crawled out from the pup tent. Oh, it was a trick, panted Billy. Alan and Joe were trying to make me forget. Fifteen worms in fifteen days. If I don't eat one in the next ten minutes, Alan will say he's won. It's almost midnight. And they'll let, they left me home, so why wouldn't remind you? Billy nodded. Have you got a worm? <laughs> We'll have to find one. Tom dug back into the pup tent and came up with two flashlights. They zigzagged back and forth across the lawn, bent over, searching. I got one, cried Pete. Shh, I'll have to eat it raw, said Billy. He threw back his head. Wait, whispered Tom, grabbing his arm. You should do it where Alan and Joe can see you. Pete, run and get your siren out of the garage. Okay, let's get our worm ready. And our siren. All right, chapter 27, the 13th worm. Under the street light in front of Alan's house, Tom and Pete knelt over the siren. Billy stood beside them, the night crawler squirming in his fingers. Now, wait till a lot of lights come on all over in all the houses, said Tom. Then chomp it down. Ready, Pete? Now. The siren growled, winding slowly up and up until it screamed across the sleeping neighborhood, sending birds squawking and chirping into the air from trees and rooftops. Dogs began to bark. Windows lit up. There were confused shouts, bangs of windows slamming up. Ladies and gentlemen, shouted Tom through the dying whine of the siren. Alan Phelps and Joseph O'Hara through their finkiness and cheating, their lies and dirty come on, muttered Billy, his head thrown back, dangling the worm over his open mouth. We haven't got much time. Alan Phelps and Joseph O'Hara, shouted Tom, have forced us to wake you all up so that you may now witness ta -ra -ta -ra 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 -ra, the eating of the thirteenth worm. He dropped to his knees. The siren wound slowly up to a screech. Billy dropped the crawler into his mouth. His eyes closed. And he chewed furiously, fell to his knees, still chewing, his face turning beet red, toppled over on his side, still chewing. Rolled and writhed about the sidewalk, clutching his stomach, still chewing. 
Tom and Pete knelt by the streetlight, working the screaming siren. Billy threw open his arms and lay still on his back under the glare of the streetlight, his mouth wide open. Ta-ra! announced Tom, springing up and pointing to Billy. The three boys ran off into the darkness. As they went, Tom yelled, Remember! Alan Phelps and Joseph O'Hara! And that's it. All right, I'll see you next time for our final chapters. <gasps> see you! Bye, Bright Learners!